So this week we're uh, forging a Merovingian style axe head. Uh, this is based on grave finds from Germany. Um, migration era, so around the birth of England. And we're starting with some 60 by 10, 3 and 3 quarter inches of, with the pole marked at an inch and a half. So we'll start off by getting it hot, obviously. Always a good starting point with blacksmithing. So you want to even heat, so stick it in, turn it round. And uh, when it's ready, give it a good scrub. So I'm going to do a double set down either side of the pole because it's got these funny protrusions front and back of the pole they've probably got a name I don't know it um, I'm using the square side of the dies for this uh, mainly because the rounded side of the dies just tend to make a circle and get the pole further and further away from where it should be. You could do this by hand uh, if you have a blacksmith's helper or a striker and a top and bottom fuller but like I said before I work alone so I'll just do it on the power hammer so once I've roughed it out on the power hammer I will put some bits of radius angle iron in the vise and uh, just pop it in there and with the cross peen I will just start defining the transition and narrowing down narrowing down the tongues on the pole be a bit easier with a fuller. I didn't actually have a fuller of the right size. Uh, this is just a prototype axe head so it wasn't really worth making one because I wasn't 100% sure this would work. I did have a backup video filmed in case this failed miserably. So, with those taken down on the cross pin, I will head over to the flat face of the anvil, just dress them down a bit, get rid of the upset on the corners, make them, make the tongues a more practical shape. Clean them up a bit. and get them close to an even thickness and width and length. So there we are. So at that stage I will cut down the blade length to three inches either side of the pole and the nice short heat I will start upsetting it back. So I didn't quite give myself as much material as I could have done with. I should really have cut them off at three and a half inches and upset it back to two and a half inches. Uh, as it happened, I cut it off to three inches and upset it back to two and a half inches. And uh, so note for next time. The upset just gives me a bit more leeway to make a wider, um, 
wider beard on the axe. So next stage I have this homemade fuller that I made especially for this, which is just a bit of 10mm round with a piece of 25 by 10 welded to it. And I'm just setting down into the transition between what will become the eye and the pole. So this transition won't actually survive the forging process in its rounded form, but it will survive enough that I can go in there with a file and clean it up. So at that stage I've marked off where the eye is going to be and like with the other axe head I'm just going to set down by the pole and then at the top end of the blade flipping it over of course Find the marks. And that just isolates the eye from the rest of the material. So with that done, I go in with the cross beam. Spread the cheeks of the eye out a little bit. I'm kind of doing this diagonally because I want the top part of the eye to be wider than the bottom part. So when I've spread it as far as I want, I will go onto the bick and using my rounding hammer just give the edges of the eye uh, a more concave shape. Just looks a bit nicer. Just basically dressing the edges. And then get those cross beam marks out. Just flitting back and forth, dressing out any of the upset from shaping the eye. At that stage, I'll start spreading the actual blade of the axe. So, just dress it to so that the in a curve, while the inner edge has a bit of a curve to it. And spread it out a bit with a cross peen again. So when that's done, I'm basically putting the curve in so that I've got a bit of a guide when I go to actually shaping the axe head. Um, like I said, I could have done with a bit more material. But when you put the carbon steel bit in there, it's going to give you a bit of extra meat to spread out. So give a bit of a straighten when you're done. So, now's the magical bit where you take your blank and fold it. Um, literally, if it bends one side more than the other, turn it over, hit the opposite side. Um, and I'm getting quite sentimental about this, but it's quite a magical moment when all of a sudden you have 
an axe appearing in front of you. Plenty of heat. So just upset the corners leading to the pole. That'll square that off for me. So you can see one if one end bends more than the other, that's going to mismatch the bottom half of the eye. So just work the shorter part more. As you can see the tongues of the pole are kicking back a bit. Uh, that caught me a little bit by surprise. I should have seen it coming really, but it's not the end of the world because it'll dress out with the drift inside afterwards. Yeah, make sure both halves meet properly. There we go. Top half of the axe head. So, grab a bit of high carbon steel, in this case a bit of recycled loose spring because I'm too much of a skin flint to buy new steel. So I'll then draw that down to a taper on the power hammer. I'm going at it quite smoothly, I want it to be quite an even taper. Then I'll uh, stick a bit of a curve on it with the turning hammer. Just to get it to match the shape of the blade on the mild steel part. So then head over to the vise and stick some tabs out. So come in at about 40, well, 27 degrees, I suppose. And uh, twist as you go, and that should flick them out, flick the pointy tabs out to 90 degrees from the main bar. And that'll just allow them to stick into the body of the axe and stop the wedge from falling out. And so at that stage I will heat up the body of the axe and get an even heat on it. And using a chisel I'll just spread it out a little bit. Just enough for the bit to fit in. And uh, stick a load of flux in there. So that is just to help the carbon steel weld. Uh, like I've said before, it's the only time I really use flux when I'm welding carbon steel. Stick the bit in. So put the put the bit in cold. Uh, means it reduces the risk of the tabs bending instead of sticking into the metal. Um, also, I like to have the mild steel hotter than the carbon steel when I'm welding. I just I find reduces the risk of the carbon steel burning. Preheat it. Once the carbon steel's hotter, stick some more flux on it and weld. So I probably used five, six welding heats to get this to fix. Uh, I actually welded by hand this time. Normally I'll 
do these under the power hammer because it's quicker. But I was in the mood to do it by hand, so I did it by hand. Swapping between the wide faced hammer. Well, I started welding with the narrow face hammer just to tack the carbon steel into place and then actually weld properly with a wide faced hammer. And once it's welded on the flat plane, I'll start blending in the edges using the BIC and the shoe turning hammer. Uh, somebody left a comment on my other axe making video, video that my welds lacked fusion. Um, I'm a bit puzzled by that. Uh, I mean, it could be right, but my main gauge for seeing if the wells have gone in right is if the eye splits when you drift it. So, once that's welded up, uh, spread it lightly with the cross beam. Just start dressing the overall shape. So you can see I'm going in with a turning hammer. I'm just dressing that curve. Just to make it a bit more attractive. So the other way you can see if a weld has gone in is if it's actually visible on the um, outside of the seam. Which as you can see not actually visible. You'll see it better on the finished product at the end of the video. I'm going to spend a little bit of time dressing it, getting it to the shape I want, getting it to the thickness that I want. I could always do this with the grinder but it's a lot quicker when you're forging it. Two minutes forging will save you ten minutes with the grinder. So then I'll pop over to the power hammer, use the round back flatter just to get out any crossbeam marks, hammer marks. Didn't get them all, but not too bothered. This is only a prototype. And over to the vice. And uh, the eye, whenever I do eyes, they seem to develop a twist because I'm holding with tongs. Uh, so just untwist that. It's easier to do it at this stage than when you drifted the eye. So I learned through hard experience. So then heat it up again and uh, bang the drift through. Now I used four or five heats to drift it out to the right shape. I'm showing you one, which I think is the second heat drifting. I know I make long videos, but I don't want them to be too long. I just want to show you enough detail that You'll be able to have a go yourselves. So, once the drift will go all the way in, I will just dress the uh, tongues on the pole. So, you can see that I've Reverse the curve. That's literally just a case of pushing them back. And then I forge them onto the drift a bit. Not too much because I don't want to damage the drift, but just to give them a small degree of internal curvature, which will match the shaft of the axe. I'll just round the edges as well.
Now you can see it's starting to look like Merovingian fighting axe. Oh, that hurt because it landed just behind my steel toe cap. So once everything's shaped and dressed, I'll just literally give the axe head a bit of a straighten, make sure that the blade part is in line with the eye. And then it's over to the grinder, just to dress the shape a bit. I'll just smooth out that curve a bit. Make sure the lines are relatively straight. Both front and back of the axe. Make sure the edge is straight, facing the direction that you want. Good idea to grind it back a few mil, uh, just to make sure that you have a nice amount of carbon steel on the edge. Because it will have narrowed it a bit from um, forging it down to a taper. But as you can see from the sparks, there's still a good amount of carbon steel along the edge. So, knock off the corner as well. And put a rough edge on. Just saves time after it's been hardened. And uh, dress the pole a bit too. Made that a little bit rounder. A little bit smoother. Uh, for the tight corners, went over to my small initia. Uh, it's finer belt as well, so I knocked off all the marks from the big linisher. And uh, give it a bit of a file around the um, pole to eye transition. Uh, which is what I was on about earlier on. Ruffled it in. The round section didn't survive the forging, which I was expecting. Uh, so I'll just file that round again. As well as dress the sides of the cheek. So then heat it up to critical very slowly. And normalise it three times. Go for a quench in oil. It's just cooking oil. Somebody did ask, didn't have time to answer his comment. I've been quite bad for answering comments the last couple of weeks, I'm very sorry about that. That's tempered, and here we go. Finished axe head. Didn't have time to haft it. But quite pleased with it. Well, you can see weld lines invisible. Sign that it's gone in quite nicely. Didn't split when uh, the eye was drifted. There we go. Things I don't like about this little axe head doesn't quite match the archaeology, but considering it's the prototype, I am quite pleased with it. So the next thing will be to stick a haft on it, test it. So thanks for watching, and I'll uh, see you on the next one. Bye.